and we really listen to the rock and yeah, this is listen. Listen to the rocket and figure out which way we should twist and turn it, where the next boulder should go. And so I think today's goal should be get a bunch of these steps in here. We're a little limited on our boulders. We have a whole nother semi load coming tomorrow and then we'll fly through this. But today if we can get four or five of these guys in here, I think we're in pretty good shape. Come on. Shh, shh. What'd you say? <laughs> What'd you say? Did, did you hear it? What he just called you? I don't know if you're gonna like that rock. <laughs> okay. What he, what that rock just said about you? Mm. What? Taking a strap off of you? <laughs> no, no, no steps for you. Oh man. Just give me a little rundown of what we did because this isn't always what we do, but it's a, I think it's gonna be a bomb-proof way for us to set a bridge. Brian, I realized we- You scared me. Oh, you're a little jumpy today. You okay? I think the last thing is I am, what? <laughs> <laughs> I realized that uh, I hadn't picked up the camera at all today and filmed anything. So, whoa. other than setting up the GoPro behind you, which so, so you guys will see something. Whoa, 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 what happened, what happened? What happened, what is that? What did you do? He's keeping the hair What did you do? Oh man, that's scary. Who get it? Who did it? Chris, are you doing <laughs> Who I know, right? Who all right? So when I realized that this is an incredible opportunity for our viewers out there to really kind of get a deep dive into what we're doing. We had the goal and the intention setting the bridge, the steps coming down from the patio today. So just give me a little rundown of what we did because this isn't always what we do, but it's a I think it's gonna be a bomb proof way for us to set a bridge. Well, let's back up a little bit. We were this close to <laughs> We were this close to not even coming out here today. We got a bunch of rain last night. Our tarps actually helped quite a bit, but this morning it was raining. The temperature went from 82 days ago to, I think it's 42 right now. Mm -hmm. Things are kind of still sticky. There's kind of this mist in the air, but as veteran seasoned professional pond builders, we said, let's push on through. Mm -hmm. Let's push on through. <laughs> and so we're out here. It's just the two of us. You look like you're a seasoned veteran professional Row boater. <laughs> I don't know. This this happens to me a lot oh. throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Anyways, we're out here. We push through the weather and everything. We're up here doing a part that just didn't require a team of five guys out here. So the two of us said, let's tackle this bridge. And here's the complication with the bridge. We've got a bridge stone over here that's seven inches thick. Who cares what it looks like? All we care about is the thickness of it. We have to match the thickness of that stone plus two more that have to sit on top of it as stairs that come up over here and they have to be perfect. If the first step coming off of this or isn't level with this, let's say that our big flat rock, let's just call this our flat rock. If this was an inch higher, this is gonna look weird because you wouldn't want to step like slope up to this. It'll just look really awkward, right? So we need to make sure that that first giant outcropy piece is exactly the same level. And then what we want to do is make sure that each step matches up with the height of the top of our bridge over here. If that wasn't tricky enough, not only do we have to make sure that that works, we also want to leave an air gap underneath the bridge. So when water comes from a waterfall over there, over there and it comes underneath here debris and stuff doesn't get stuck underneath that thing and will still allow leaves grass clippings whatever to move through this and then go over the waterfall so our waterfall or our spill stone which is right there uh -huh. so throw the level right there just so people can kind of see really the two most important elevations are going to be the spill stone so that we can determine the depth of the water in this pooling area behind the spill stone and the elevation of our patio and then we have to figure out how to logically and equally staircase down or stair step down okay. to our bridge. So now look at this. Here's where we had to change something. So ideally we always want that air gap underneath this. But if you see the top of this is considerably lower than the top of our spill stone, meaning that our bridge stone is actually gonna sit in the water. But we had to say, would we rather that be exactly at the right height here? Or do we want the bottom of our bridge stone to sit a little bit in the water? And to me, that being perfect- Is way more way important. Way more important. So what'll happen, let's say this is our bridge and water comes up to here. 
on our bridge, water will still pass through here. You're just not gonna get a ton of circulation from there to here. So what you'll end up seeing as water moves through this, you almost see like kind of this spring fed look over here because the water still has to release someplace. And as long as there's a big air pocket someplace, water will come out from underneath this bridge, kind of well up and it'll look spring fed right here and then come out over there. Now some of this has been built up. Some of this has been excavated into the virgin soil. We didn't know which sections were built up and what sections weren't. So we came in through here. Oh, this is gonna be hard to show you. We dug out a big pit. Basically, we dry set the bridge, just yep. to give all you guys an idea of what we did. So we dry set the bridge on the ground to get it to the angle and the orientation that we wanted. Where we wanted to dig out, we dug a big hole, mm -hmm. put fabric in the hole. Think of it as like a geo grid, yep. but it's a thick fabric. Then we came in, we put in CA7 over the top just to crush stone to give us a nice thick base. And then we compensated for that height difference with just some wall stone. This ensures that this bridge will never ever move. Because right. if the bridge moves, the stepping stones are gonna move. If the stepping stones move, then we get back to that not looking perfect. Right. I wanted to look perfect a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. So, so this base material was really, really important. And the base material, when we dug it, it's a couple inches below the top of our spill stone, which is what we want, because we want to be able to bring the fabric and liner and fabric over and then gravel on top of the liner. And it can't be higher than that spill stone. It dams everything up. So we put the gravel down, compacted the crap out of it, and then brought our wall stone, which is that concrete block, which will be our legs, right, for our bridge. Yep. And we kind of reverse engineered to the elevation that we needed to be. So we took our benchmark, which was our patio height, figured out the thickness of our bridge, which was seven inches. And I think we had what, 10 and a quarter inches left over. Yep. But we also had to think about the thickness of these. So we actually need to have two of these wall stone pieces to build our legs. We're gonna put our liner down next, then another piece of rock pad on top of that, then another one of those guys. If I were to sum it all up, there's no way you guys should remember all these measurements because these measurements would mean nothing to you. Every job is gonna be unique to itself. Just make sure when you're getting in close to a patio, close to a bridge, and you know what things, it's a lot of math. Yeah. It's the basic math, so stay in school, kids. <laughs> So you can see we've got the liner back over the fabric and those blocks. And then we put some more heavy duty rock pad over the top of the liner. And then this is that second course um, that we needed to put on top or the second piece of wall stone to build our legs. Now it's time to get our bridge stone strapped up and bring it over here and set. All right, so I think this makes a little bit more sense. Remember before we had our base material, we had a brick on top and the thick fabric over the top. In fact, we did two layers of that thick fabric because you never want to put a rock liner then rock. So we really padded the heck out of those things. Then we put another piece of this thick underlayment before we put basically our kickstands for this bridge. We've got a nice solid base and then the necessary height to get our bridge at the level we want it. We've got that two inch gap. So water level should be right about here. So it'll allow that debris to move through here pretty effortlessly. And then the top of this stone is exactly 11 inches lower than the top of the patio. We have two five and a half inch steps down there. So we should get right to our so patio height there. Let's show that real quick, Brian. Okay, so we have our six foot level and you can shoot this with a transit too. It's just because of the proximity of the patio is just easier for us. We got our six foot level. You can see we are level with the top of the patio and then we come over here and on our stick, we're right at like 11 and a quarter inches from the bottom of the level, which is top of patio to the top of our bridge. So now we just have to divide that between our two steps. Yeah, now we'll come in here and set these steps to match up with this. We intentionally set this out a little further. I'd rather have a space between that last step and here, and I can always fill that with a piece of flagstone, some crushed granite, whatever, some type of pathway material. The only other option is if you got really close because of this curved patio, you could actually cut that curve into your step, which would be incredible looking, but a lot, a lot of work for, I don't think anything that's gonna bring that much more pizzazz to the job. <laughs> I think one thing that kind of the key idea that we want our, you guys out there to take away from this is the prep work, right? The due diligence. You don't want to measure once and cut Where twice. Where's that slinging boulders out here, guys? No, I we got to use gotta, gotta, like a little bit of this. The four years of education I got. <laughs> <laughs> that was more just exercise for the gerbil in the cage that's up there. We're even like, so even when setting this stone, we were kind of mentally figuring out where the other stones are going to go. So we've got a stacked slate sphere that's going to come in over here and we want that to fall 
fall into a shallow little pool before it works this way. And then we're gonna get that waterfall from that pool to drop right in here. So we will get a, like this notch we were paying attention to. We're gonna come off, but we might take that big rock there, slide that guy all the way in over to here, which will be one frame rock, then take another one, probably have to dig this out. These two rocks will frame out the waterfall that'll drop this way and go underneath it. This rock too, also then acts as the pivot point for these other stairs to work off of. When we look at these stairs, we didn't want to like come straight down and then continue to go that way. We want you to kind of have to think about your steps as you're going down. So right in here, we're gonna drop in a pretty substantial boulder, which will force the traffic to go this way. Then you remember that rock? It forces us to go this way. So then the next steps are gonna actually come down over here. So we're literally gonna make a 90 degree turn on this bridge, which will just add that much more character. The last thing it does is these other stairs now are moved way over into this side of the yard where we have a lot more creative freedom to kind of manipulate and move those things around. If the stairs came down right through here, look at how close I am to all of my existing wall stuff. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get really challenging. And I want to try to move these stairs away. We need plants in here. Yep. We just have to have some landscaping. It's gonna start looking like a giant wall, a big a quarry, right? If we don't get some plants in here. So I really wanna get those stairs kind of coming like this and going out that way before they come back and around. And that just gives us that much more creative freedom too. We're not defined to a very small area. We can really change the shape and manipulate the direction of those steps. So hope you guys like it. Hi, Brian. Hey there. <laughs> Looks like you're shoveling that stuff into the dingo. <laughs> You guys pay attention, okay? Chris likes to shovel like this. Yes. This is the most dangerous way to shovel around teammates. Tell me why, Chris, because what happens to this loose end is you're like. Listen, you clearly didn't learn your lesson and start wearing rec specs to the jobs, but yes, it is dangerous. Dude, they put this grip right here so you could actually use mm -hmm. it. You don't want to hold the shovel down here because this becomes a flying object. Yeah, but it's more work right. on the core. No. So we're getting some of this uh, three quarter angular rock and we are going to set it on top of that piece of fabric over there and start working our staircase, going, winding back up around the back side of the berm, kind of to where the machine's at, but we're gonna kind of let it go and see what happens. But we want to put this down underneath those steps and uh, we're just gonna work our way from the bottom up, yeah? Yeah, there's not really a, a set plan. We've got the hard ones done. We've got the ones finished up there by the patio, mm -hmm. which were tricky. These ones were really important because we wanted to set the heights right based off our future fire pit over there but here all the way up to about where that green bucket is we can let this just be way more organic so we'll set this first one and then it's really going to determine how we set the next one on top of it and we really listen to the rock and yeah this is listen listen to the rocket and figure out which way we should twist and turn it where the next boulder should go and so i think today's goal should be get a bunch of these steps in here we're a little limited on our boulders we have a whole nother semi load coming tomorrow and then we'll fly through this but today if we can get four or five of these guys in here i think we're in pretty good shape come on shh, shh. what'd you say <laughs> what'd you say did, did you hear it what he just called you I don't know if you're gonna like that rock. <laughs> okay. What he, what that rock just said about you? Mm. What? Taking a strap off of you? <laughs> no, no, no steps for you. Oh man. 